Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So this video is one that has been in the making for quite some time now. I think it was last June when I tweeted out that I was going to start making this video and so it's been almost a year now. The main reason why it did take so long is because my roommate and I were kind of watching the movies at our own pace. Like we weren't rushing to finish them or anything because you know we we're having a good time. And then also it ended up taking a while for me to rank them all because believe it or not ranking over 100 movies isn't exactly an easy thing to do and so instead of doing it all in just one video because I don't think that that would give me enough time to talk about each movie as much as I would like. I am going to be splitting this up into three parts. This is part one, so movies like 108 to like 72 or something, and then we'll have a part two later, and then a part one, which will have my top 36. So they all have 36 movies all together, um, because that's the even amount. And that actually really helped me with ranking them. Once I kind of stepped back from like the bigger picture of the list and kind of focused on like each individual list per video, that really helped because I could kind of like rank them almost in like a tier list sort of way instead of like the big 108 list. I'm also only focusing on the official decom so I can put the link down below to like the official decom list. Um, but that's mainly because I don't think it's fair to compare theatrically released movies to like made for TV movies. And also because I already have 108 movies, I do not need any more to add because I'm already stressed out enough as it is. And so with all that being said, let's just jump right into it. Ooh, a staff. I like the sound of that. So if anyone who has seen every single decom of all time and does not have this movie listed as number 108, I do not trust them. I don't think this is just the worst decom of all time. I think it could also possibly be the worst movie of all time. It's just really bad. It's about this guy, his name's Jack, and he's a dog psychiatrist, so kind of like a dog whisperer. And basically this dog comes in and he's like super depressed. And so he cures his depression and then the owner who's like super rich dies and leaves all of his money to his dog on the condition that Jack will move in and take care of him. So basically he gets to live in like this mansion. But then the rich guy that died, his like family finds out that he left all of his money to his dog. And so they're like mad about it. And they try to like prove that Jack is mentally unfit to take care of the dog and the fortune. And you're probably thinking that doesn't sound like that bad of a movie. Like it also kind of sounds kind of familiar. Like almost like it's been done before. The premise of the movie doesn't seem that bad, but it's once you get into like the really weird stuff where the movie just really takes a turn. Like the fact that Jack, when he was 14, he actually could read dogs' minds. He could channel dogs, but then he stops being able to do that. And then he grows up and decides to like open a dog whispering business based off of this power that he had when he was 14, but he no longer has anymore. And he's just like, you know what? gonna make my whole business based off of that. And then like the movie takes a twist where he ends up being able to do that again. Like he's able to channel this dog to the point where like he's digging holes in the backyard and like tearing apart furniture. Like half of the movie, this guy is just channeling the dog, like acting like he is the dog. And it's just super weird to see this like grown man eating couches and stuff. And then the whole ending was super weird as well because like the rich guy's family was trying to prove that he like wasn't mentally stable. And so he has to like go into court and like prove that he can channel the dog. And then everyone in the courtroom just believes him. And then like one of the guys like pulls out a gun and it turns out like he killed the guy. And it was just a mess. Yeah, it's definitely the worst decom of all time. And I don't think that any decom will ever be able to get worse than this one. I must start. I must start. So this movie is about a girl who wants to become a jockey, but oh no, it's a predominantly male sport, so we can't have that. Um, I feel bad kind of making fun of that plotline because I do think it is a good message, but there's just so many decoms with that exact same plotline and none of them are done well in my opinion. Anyways, her dad died in a jockey related accident and so like her mom doesn't want her to be a jockey either. And then like the horse is scared of the gates and so they give him like horse headphones and that becomes a thing. I don't know, it's a horse racing movie. If you like horses, then maybe you'd like this movie. I personally just don't like horse movies, and so I really didn't enjoy this movie. Also, Horse Sense, which is a movie we'll talk about in a little bit, um, taught me better than to like a movie about horse racing because that's cruel to the horses. Yeah, overall, I just found this movie to be pretty boring, which is a word I will try to use only when I really mean it in this video because I know in my Barbie video, I used it way too much, but this movie, I mean it. It was really boring, and I hope I will never have to watch it ever again. Miss Parker, Scott, did you hear Amy's mom robbed the bank? So this movie is basically like a live action Incredibles movie, except it's really bad. It's about this family of superheroes. They all have their own superhero power and you have to get your power before you turn 13 or else you just won't get your power. And so the main kid obviously is about to turn 13 and he hasn't gotten his power yet. And so instead of just like telling his family he's normal and they all love him for who he is, he decides to lie and say that he's gotten his power and everyone just believes him for some reason. 
Um, and then obviously bad guys come, they have to like save the world. And it's just such a bad movie. Like I haven't watched it since we watched it because I really just can't bring myself to watch it again. But all I really remember is that the main kid was just so unlikable and that the final resolution of the movie just sucked. And just overall, it sucks. Like even if you like superheroes, even if I made it sound interesting, don't watch this movie, it's not good. Maybe we could sell something else, like our blood. It does upset me a little bit to have this movie so far back because it is pretty nostalgic for me and I remember really liking it when I was younger but I don't think I had rewatched it since then and I gotta say after rewatching it it is just such a bad movie. It's basically about Zeke from Zeke and Luther. He plays Alex in this movie and he's like this cocky hockey player and then he's got this little sister who's played by Jean Alias or as I like to call her the little devil from Sunny with a Chance and so she has this whole like Girl Scout troop and then her Girl Scout leader goes I forget why I think she dies or something. And then Alex comes in and he becomes their troop leader. And honestly, it's just such a painfully boring movie. And Alex is just the worst character ever. I think he could possibly be one of the worst Disney Channel characters of all time. He is so self-centered and there's just no redeeming qualities to him. He does so much bad stuff and I feel like he never gets redeemed by the end of the movie. I just hate him the whole time. And then I wrote down in my notes that this movie would be better if it was about their gay love. And I'm not too sure who I was referring to. I think it was um, Alex and his hockey player antagonist guy, which like, I don't even really remember, but I agree. That is ludicrous. Of course it's ludicrous, that's the point of this now that I'm thinking of it, I don't think there's any decom about dogs that's been done well. Like they're all bad, every single one of them. This one, um, the kid from Smart Guy's in it and he has to like look after this demon dog and it's just such a terrible movie. Like half of the movie is just filled with like this little dog running around and being annoying and tearing up stuff and everyone hiding from the evil dog. Shia LaBeouf's in it though, so that's cool. Um, and um, what's her face? Uh, Sarah Paxton, she's in this too. And I do feel like there are some funny moments in the movie, so I feel like it would be one of those movies that you could watch with friends and it's so bad that it's funny. There's this one magazine scene that comes to mind that I remember being like, that was good. But overall, yeah, it was a really bad movie. Ta-da! <laughs> well, I would definitely say that this is the worst DCOM sequel ever made, which makes me really sad because I feel like Johnny Tsunami is one of the best DCOMs ever made. And so I don't like that this movie ruins the Johnny Tsunami name. And also the fact that this movie was made 10 years after the first movie, I think is really cool. And I would like them to do that with more DCOMs. But if they did, they would really need to make them better than this movie. It's basically about Johnny and his family. They go back to Hawaii for their grandfather's wedding. And then Johnny meets like his new uncle who's Jake T. Austin. So he's like a little kid and he's like really annoying and stuff. And then they all take up dirt, um, dirt skateboarding, dirt boarding. And I gotta say, I love Jake T. Austin, but he's really annoying in this movie, which I guess is the point. He's supposed to be like the annoying uncle, but he really takes annoying to like a new level. iZombie's in it too, the girl from iZombie. Um, she also plays Tinkerbell in Once Upon a Time, so that's cool. But overall, it is a pretty bad movie, and it makes me sad that it is bad. And I just wouldn't recommend that you waste your time by watching it. Good boy, good boy, let's skateboard. This is another one I don't really like having this far back because I remember really liking it as a kid, but that could also be because I remember them playing it so much. I spent so much time watching this movie that I feel like I just had to like it. It's basically about Kyle Massey. He plays Calvin, who is this kid who wants to buy this expensive comic book. And so he decides to adopt a dog and have him compete in this dog show competition where you like win money so we can buy the comic book. Kate Panabaker's in it and I like her. I think she's great. Also young Mitchell Musso is pretty adorable but overall the movie is just a really bad movie kyle massey's character is the worst and also like the effort that they put into this movie is so bad like there's one scene where kyle's body double is like skateboarding down a hill and you just see his whole face like the whole time you see his body double and it's just terrible but there is a lot of memorable scenes in this movie like the one where like the dog makes him switch beds with him and like there's a few others too that have just been engraved in my brain and so i think i will always have a soft spot for this movie because i watched it a lot when i was younger but i gotta say overall it is really bad <laughs> your father has something to say 
So I watched this movie for the first time when making this list and it was one I was really excited to watch because I know a lot of people do really like it, um, but turns out I am just not one of those people. It stars Marnie from Halloween Town. I forget her character's name, but she plays this girl who is 13 years old and she's an only child. And then she finds out that her parents are going to have quintuplets. And so that's five babies. And so that turned into the movie being an hour and a half of me watching five babies crying nonstop. That's all I remember. Every time I think about this movie, all I think of is watching babies crying for way too long and I didn't like it. The main reason why it is a little bit higher up than I probably would have had it is because I do really like the message of the movie. The whole idea of no longer being an only child when you're 13 and having to deal with like suddenly having five younger siblings. I can't imagine how hard and stressful that would be to a 13 year old and so I like that they are covering that and I feel like that's something that kids do go through and so that's why I do have it just a little bit higher than I would have had it. It's just every time I think about it, I get annoyed because of the babies crying. But now that I'm thinking of it, that's kind of nice that that's what it was maybe because then it kind of shows that like that's what she was going through. I had to watch it for an hour and a half, but she that was her life. Her life was now five babies crying. So that's nice, but that doesn't make me want to put it any higher on the list. So this movie is another really boring one in my opinion. It's about this girl who goes to Hawaii um, and finds out that she's like inherited part of the island um, and she like learns to surf while she's there. And I just felt like nothing really happened in this movie. I feel like the concept was good, but then the execution was not good and it just fell flat for me. There was a ship in it, but I feel like it wasn't really that good. It's just everything about this movie just feels really mediocre to me. I know that some people have said that this one is nostalgic for them. And so I'm sorry that I'm hating on this movie, but I, I didn't enjoy it. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Oh no, Heather. It's... So, fun fact about me is that I do not like sports movies. I feel like they're all the same and I do not like them. And so this is a sports movie. It's based off of a true story. It's about these two twins. They're tall and they play basketball and I'm like, good for them. But I feel like the movie was not very good. Um, the principal from High School Musical is in it. So it's got that going for it. But other than that, I didn't enjoy it. Oh, there was also this one scene where like the cute boy is playing basketball with them. And I really liked that scene, but the rest of the movie was just like a boring sports movie and I didn't like it. And I had to watch it twice because I didn't even remember it when I watched it the first time because that's how like much I didn't like it. And then I watched it again and I was like, oh, I don't like this movie. And so that's how I feel about Double Teamed. <laughs> Hello, Nick, you rotten little worm. So I feel like this movie isn't really that bad. I just personally don't really like it. It's about this uncle who's kind of scummy and he goes and babysits his nephews and niece on Christmas Eve. And then Santa comes and like passes out. And so him and one of the kids takes over Santa's duties for the night because it's Christmas Eve. Um, and then the uncle just ends up like stealing stuff from every house. The other kids and like Santa wakes up and they like go and like have to stop them being bad. Overall, I feel like it actually wasn't that bad. I feel like it was kind of entertaining and like was a decent story, but it's the uncle and his whole thing that I just feel like ruined the whole movie for me. Every time I think about the movie, I feel like the movie is scummy because the uncle was so scummy. Yeah, definitely not one of my favorite Christmas movies, but I would understand if someone were like, oh my gosh, I love that movie so much. How could you put it that far back? I'd be like, I don't know. Well, it's not officially our two week anniversary oh. tomorrow, but I can't stand it. I love it. What did you get me? So every time I think back to this movie, I like tell myself that this movie wasn't that bad. I feel like it was a pretty decent movie, but I don't think I like it enough to have it any higher on the list than it is. It's got the Lawrence brothers in it. So that's great. I love me some Lawrence brothers. It's about this one cousin who's like rich and stuck up and he goes and visits his other cousin's ranch that they bond and stuff. I feel like if I rewatch this movie, Maybe it would be higher up on the list, but I really don't want to rewatch it. The only thing I wrote down is that this movie doesn't make any horse sense. And I'm not sure if I wrote that down because the movie actually did not make any horse sense or because I wanted to make the joke of it not making any horse sense because the movie is called Horse Sense, but I don't want to rewatch it. So I guess we'll never know. Please. All right. So this is another sports movie 
and we all know how I feel about those. It's also based off of a true story. It's sisters again. They are drag racers and so it's like about them and they're competing in drag racing and stuff and how it's a predominantly male sport and so they do that plot line again. Honestly this one's pretty similar to Double Teamed in the fact that they're both sports movies and they're both fairly boring. But Brie Larson's in it so that's fun and I feel like the main character like the main sister the older one I feel like she's in a lot of other stuff too but yeah, I just didn't really enjoy this movie very much. I wrote down something in my notes that I thought was funny and that is that I said, why am I crying? I don't even like this movie. And so I thought that that was funny and I wanted to share. Yeah, at least it got me to cry. But also I cry in a lot of movies, so that's not really saying much. Dude, what's with the door slam drama? <sighs> So Smart Guy's back again. I actually like this movie. I feel like it's pretty decent. It's basically about these kids whose like parents are scientists and then they get caught in like their recent experiment and then they end up aging backwards. And so the kids have to like figure out a way to stop that from happening. And I feel like it was a pretty interesting concept and yeah, I didn't hate it. The whole movie basically took place in their house and I feel like that made it feel a little bit contained in a way, if that makes sense. I don't know. It's been a while since I watched the movie so maybe I would disagree if I rewatched it. But um, for now, that's where it is. Wait, wait, this is way too wiggy. We cannot have the same dream. So I feel like there's just something about third installments of DCOMs that just make them not good. Like, I feel like they're all bad. I mean, except for High School Musical, but I feel like that doesn't really count because that was theatrically released and whatnot. This movie is about Xenon. She is competing in this like moon race thing. Protozoa is not even in it so like really what's the point of the movie overall? Also the ship sucks which is something that bugs me about the Xenon series which is that she has like a different love interest in every movie which makes me mad because none of them are as good as Greg in the first movie. They should have just kept Greg. He was the best and he deserved better. Um, I think when I first rewatched this movie I had it a lot farther back on the list than it ended up being. I think mainly because it is really bad and now I don't really remember how bad it was. But I just love Xenon so much that I couldn't have it be any farther back than this, so. We're not talking about laundry anymore, are we? So I feel like this movie is hated on by a lot of people. It is the fourth installment of the Halloween Town series and I feel like it mainly gets a lot of hate because they replaced the lead actress in this movie, which I personally don't really have that big of a problem with. Like I like Sarah Paxton, I think she's a fine actress. What bugs me is that they completely change Marnie's character in this movie. Like she feels like a completely different person. They even style her differently, which I found to be so weird. And then the whole movie overall just doesn't really seem like it fits in the Halloween Town series. It's about Marnie and her brother going to which university and then there's like this love interest which similar to Xenon I don't like how the Halloween Town series doesn't really stick with one love interest either like in the first two movies they had Luke and he was great they should have just kept him and then Halloween Town High comes and then there's suddenly this whole different guy that she's with and then this movie comes and Lucas Gabriel's character is suddenly the love interest which just came out of nowhere yeah I'm not the biggest fan of this movie but I also don't hate it I still think it's pretty entertaining and the storyline is like decent also it's got one of the best Jesse McCartney songs in it so it's got that going for it Ants never seem like they're having a lot of fun. Yeah, you're right. So I think this movie is actually based off of a really famous book. I've never heard of it, but apparently it is, which is cool. Um, it's about this girl whose grandfather is dying, I think of leukemia, and then to like help her cope with that, she's like in this love triangle. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's like helping out with dolphins and stuff and like that's what it's supposed to be But the movie really makes it seem like the love triangle is more important Also Ryan Merriman's in it and he's like a decom legend But overall the movie is pretty boring The main reason why I have it higher on the list is because there's a love triangle I like love triangles, but I wouldn't recommend this movie. It's actually pretty boring but Chicken wings are only 10 cents a wing on Wednesday Can I just have my cake? Please. So I feel like Twitches is a pretty famous decom franchise, but I will explain it anyways for those of you who maybe haven't seen it. It's basically about these two twins. They were born in this mystical land called Coventry, but then they were separated at birth and brought into the human world. And then it's like their 16th birthday or something, and then they reunite and figure out that they're twins and they have these powers and they have to go and like save Coventry and stuff. And I like Twitches. I like Twitches as a concept. Like growing up, I loved it. It was one of my favorite Halloween series. But now when I go back and rewatch them, I just can't ignore the fact that they're like not very good movies. I know that they are based on a book series and I've heard that the book series is really good. And so maybe I'll give that a chance because it makes me sad that I think that the movies aren't very good because I have like an emotional attachment to them because I love them so much growing up. Oh, they're also princesses. Did I mention that? Did I mention? Oh, uh, <laughs> come here. Let's go inside. Okay. Get some tea. So this movie is about this school's dance team, basically like a sports movie, like it's a pretty predictable storyline. They're like going to competitions and stuff. What I found weird about it is that they call it dance team, even though it's very clearly like cheer team, like they're all wearing cheer uniforms and like 
pom-poms and stuff but the movie does take place in like a spanish community which i thought was really cool like as someone who was learning spanish it was nice when they would like say stuff and i'd be like I don't know what that means. The dance teacher is also the voice of Meg from Hercules. So that was fun. There was like this whole thing where the school was like really poor so they couldn't afford new uniforms. And so they used like the old uniforms. And then of course by like the end big competition they get these cool new uniforms. But the old uniforms were way better. Like these new uniforms are just like basic cheerleading uniforms that like, you know, been there, done that. But overall, I liked the movie. I thought it was decent. And then we'll throw it in the microwave. There's one in the teacher's lounge. And we'll stick it in dog food. Shouldn't it be human food? So this movie is one that I personally always feel bad for liking as much as I do because it is like super sexist. It stars Zendaya and she plays this character named Zoe who has this app where she can control boys. And I feel like that alone just kind of shows that it's like sort of a problematic concept. There's also a ship in it and the ship isn't very good either, but Zendaya's in it and Zendaya's the best and she dances and it's great and there's a song and it's great and it is a really entertaining and fun movie and that's why I couldn't have it be any farther back even though it probably should have been farther back especially because the whole like resolution of the movie like the whole message is supposed to be that like boys aren't dogs but the way that they resolve everything is by being like you can't make a dog turn on its own pack and so that's how we'll defeat the app but then it's like so you're still calling them dogs then the boys are still dogs we have learned nothing in this movie so yeah kind of problematic but really fun and so I like it, but I shouldn't like it. Your father's stupid. I mean, you do have a father, right? I don't really know what it means to have a father. So, it's been a hot minute since we talked about the Lawrence Brothers. Um, this movie stars Andrew Lawrence. He plays this kid who accidentally clones himself. And I gotta say, his acting in this movie is really good. Like, when he's the clone, he feels like a completely different person. And I was just really impressed with his acting in this movie because he is so young. Something I wasn't as impressed with is the uh, body double work in this movie. Like there's this one scene where like they're looking through binoculars and the, the one arm is just so clearly not his arm. It's so bad, I'm sure I'll put it in here. But I feel like we're at a point in this list where like generally speaking, I do really like all of these movies. And this one is one of them. I think it's a decent movie. I would recommend it. Also, evil cousin Vicky from Life with Derek is in it. She's the love interest and I like their story arc. They've got a really cute little love story in the movie. I'm not the biggest fan of the ending. I don't know. I've seen this movie a few times now and every time the ending kind of catches me off guard and I'm like, why? I don't really want to spoil it, but I feel like I can't really explain it without spoiling it. But basically they decide to keep the clone in the end, which just seems like a weird choice because I don't know, he's a clone. But I'm happy they do. Like it makes for a heartwarming ending. And yeah, it's a good movie. I'd recommend it. The turkey, you big stupid! So I like this movie. I think it's pretty good. It's about this guy who wishes that his younger brother didn't exist or like wasn't born. And it's pretty good. Lilane's in it from Lizzie McGuire. It's also got that song, I forget what it's called, but it's like, you know I'd walk a thousand miles. You know that song? Oh, I think it's called A Thousand Miles. Also, now that I'm thinking of it, does that mean that song's a decom song now? Maybe. Also, they get a pet turkey, which is fun. I like that. <laughs> So this movie is actually a sequel to Horse Sense, but I don't think you need to watch Horse Sense to watch this movie. It's got all of the Lawrence brothers in it, which is awesome. And so it's about the cousins from Horse Sense. They go on this boat and then the brother, the Lawrence brother that's in Boy Meets World, he comes and he's like the captain of the boat. And then they have to abandon the boat, which is why it's called Jumping Ship. And then the movie's about them trying to survive on this stranded island. And I like the movie. I think it's pretty good. I really like getting to watch Matthew Lawrence because I think he's adorable. I might be a little bit biased because he's in this movie, but I'm okay with that. Leave me alone. So I don't actually think this movie was very good, but every time I think back to it, I'm like, I love that movie. <laughs> it's a true story about this family that rescues this chimp and like raises the chimp. And I think that that's why I think I love this movie because it's like, it's about a monkey and he's so cute. Actually, I think it's a girl. Sorry, I just misgendered the monkey, but she's a really cute monkey and the little boy and her like become friends and it's a cute story. I wanna rewatch it, but they took it off Disney Plus. I think, cause I could have sworn it was on there on launch day, but now I can't find it. 
so that's disappointing but maybe it's a good thing because then i think if i were to rewatch it it would probably be farther back on the list i recommend it but you can't really there isn't really anywhere to watch it unless you want to buy it which like why would you want to do that just wait oh it'll come on disney plus eventually stage three the merge okay so I love The Sweet Life and The Sweet Life on Deck as much as the next person, but I do not like this movie. I think it's really bad. The only notes I wrote down for it is Cody sucks and this movie's weird. And so I guess Cody sucks and this movie's weird. <laughs> it's about Zach and Cody. They go to this twin camp, but it's like an evil twin camp. And so this guy is like trying to get rid of twins and turn the twins into one person. I feel like if it wasn't attached to The Sweet Life name, this one would probably be even farther back on the list. But because it's like these characters that like I'm already attached to emotionally, that's why the movie is higher up than it would have been. I feel like this is a good movie to watch with friends because it is like so bad that it's funny, but also it's just bad in general. So yeah, I don't think I watched it since it came out. And after rewatching it, like I understand why it's not very good. Okay, just so you know, Teddy, that star in the tree tradition means everything to your brother Gabe. So similar to The Sweet Life, I love Good Luck Charlie. I think it's one of the greatest Disney Channel shows of all time, but the movie, in my opinion, I just don't think is very good. It's about Teddy and her mom being stranded during Christmas time, and then they have to like find their way back to their family. Kind of like a road trip movie. Not kind of, it is a road trip movie. And it's just very bland, in my opinion. Like I feel like nothing really happens in the movie. Like there are some funny parts to it, but overall, I just don't really think it's a very good movie. I think the only good plotline we got from the movie was that Toby ended up being a thing and being born and that made for a good storyline in the show as well. But like as far as the movie's concerned, similarly to Sweet Life, if this movie wasn't tied to Good Luck Charlie, I think it would have been even farther back on the list than it already is. And it's already not very high. So that's how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've already said everything I really need to say about Twitches when I talked about the first movie. I feel like this one's just slightly better. It's basically the same plot line. They have to go back and save Coventry, but this time there's like ships involved. And so I feel like that makes the movie slightly better. And I also just feel like the overall storyline of the movie is a little bit better, but like not by much. I wrote down why the hole in my notes and I'm not really too sure what that means. And I don't feel like rewatching the movie. And so if someone can let me know down below what hole I'm referring to, that would be great. So after looking for the clips for this video, I think I figured out what hole I was referring to. At the end of the movie, there's like this random hole um, on the roof that the bad guy falls into. But like, why is it there? Why is there this random hole on the roof? Where does it lead to? What is its purpose? I guess we'll never know. No, 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 no. he is a newborn pop. Okay, totally wrong social bracket. So this is another decom that's based off of a book and it's one of those movies where you're watching it and it's like, I feel like this would be a really good book, but the movie is just not very good. It stars Debbie Bryant, she plays this girl named Tara, who is like super shy, but has this secret persona where she's this radio DJ called Radio Rebel. And I personally just am not a very big fan of Debbie Ryan's acting. I feel like she doesn't really know how to act shy in this movie. Like I feel like she's way over the top and it's just like, unrealistically shy, but that could also be like maybe the directing she was given in this movie. I'm not sure, but I've definitely known a few shy people in my life and none of them have acted like she acts in this movie, but maybe they do exist somewhere out there. I've just not had the pleasure of meeting them. This is like one of those movies where like I want to like it, but I just don't, I don't think it's a good movie, but I know a lot of people do like it. And so I think that that's great. I'm happy that you can find enjoyment in it. Um, excuse me. How is this more important than me getting my pancakes? So I feel like a lot of people think that this movie is a really bad movie, but I personally have always liked it. Maybe it's nostalgia talking, but every time I've rewatched this movie, I've really enjoyed it. It's like a three part story. So it's like three different stories about these friends who fight, but then make up by the end of it. And then in the end of the movie, all of the stories kind of come together. And it's got like Bella Thorne in it, Zendaya's in it, the girl from Ant Farm's in it, uh, Nick Robinson's in it. Oh, and the guy from Winging It, he's in it too. So it's like a star studded cast. I like the movie, I feel like you should watch it, come to your own conclusion, um, and then let me know down below what you think of Frenemies. This isn't a blanket, it's a rag. I carry it around in case I have to wipe up something. So I have expressed my love for under wraps before in my Halloween video, which now that I'm thinking of it, I'm probably really contradicting that list in this video, but guess what? People change their minds and I'm sure I'm gonna rewatch this list in a few months from now and disagree with everything, but this is how I feel right now and this is where under wraps is.
right now. Under Wraps is a good movie. It's the very first decom ever, well like officially very first decom. And I feel like for the first decom, it is a pretty good movie. It's about these kids who find this mummy and like become friends with the mummy. It's pretty great. And I really want to recommend it to people, but it's not on Disney Plus for some reason, which is really weird because I thought that it was, but maybe it wasn't. It's a good movie. I hope by the time Halloween comes around that it will be on Disney Plus so that people can watch it because I think it's good. I like it. <laughs> so I am a little bit sad about where Cowbells ended up on this list just because it is a classic and I love Ali and AJ so much but after rewatching it I do have to admit that it isn't a very good movie. It's about these two sisters who are rich who are played by Ali and AJ and they have to go work at their father's dairy company and then they end up having to help save the business and so it's kind of like Material Girls but with cows and there are some ships in there. AJ's kind of sucks but Ali's is decent. She like helps this cow give birth with the guy at one point and yeah I feel like this movie has a lot of nostalgia tied into it but overall it's just not a very good movie. Ooh exposure causes severe acne you want to see. So I don't think that this movie is a very good movie but the soundtrack is amazing. Had Me At Hello is probably my favorite decom song of all time. Luke Benward's version, not Olivia's. Although Olivia's is good too, but Luke Benward's version is way better. And all of the rest of the songs on the album are just so good. The movie, hmm, not as much. <laughs> it's about this girl named Skylar who's played by Olivia Holt. She's the daughter of these um, monster hunters and she like finds out and then monsters are loose and they have to go and like fight the monsters and like conquer their fears. It's not a very good movie. It's really not, but the soundtrack, is. So don't watch the movie, but listen to the songs because they're good. Why are you hiding? I see you. So kind of like with Return to Halloween Town, I feel like this movie gets a lot of hate because Raven's not in it, which I understand it is weird because Raven was kind of like the main cheetah girl, but I wouldn't really mind it if this movie was actually good, but in my opinion, it's not. <laughs> it's about the cheetah girls going to India for this Bollywood movie, but once they get there, they find out that the director only wants one of them. And so they all have to like compete against each other to get the lead role. And it's really disappointing to me that this movie isn't very good because I feel like India is such a cool setting to have a decom based in, especially because I feel like we haven't really explored Indian culture that much on Disney Channel and so I feel like the potential for this movie was there but it just really did not work out. Also there is way too many songs in this movie and I love songs but this movie there's like a new song every five seconds it's just way too much. There's also this one song where like everybody's falling in love and it's just so forced and weird and I do not like it <laughs> but I did like how every time Dorinda's boyfriend called he was just listed on her phone as Spain. I thought that was funny. There are some good songs in this movie and I do just really like the Cheetah Girls and so that's why I feel like it ended up being a little bit higher on the list than it probably should be. But yeah, I feel like if you watch the first two movies then you kind of have to watch this one, but I don't think I'd recommend it just on its own. There's one. So I like this movie. I think it's all right. It is the third movie of the Halloween Town series. It's about Marnie bringing kids from the Halloween Town world into the human world to go to school. So I guess now that I'm thinking of it, it's kind of like Descendants, but with like Halloween characters. The main thing that bugs me about this movie is I feel like the first two Halloween Towns are really in sync and go together really well. And then this movie and the next one kind of just come out of nowhere. Like I feel like they don't fit in with the storyline set up in the first two movies. But I like the whole high school element. I like that it's set in a high school because it, that's fun. But yeah, I'm not sure if I would recommend it. For those of you who don't know how to tell time, I strongly urge you to learn. So I feel like out of all of the decoms, this is definitely the one that receives the most hate, mainly because I feel like a lot of people did not want it to exist. I personally don't think it is that bad, but I did do a whole review on it back when the movie came out. So I won't go too far in depth in this video. The movie is basically about Kim going off and starting high school and she makes this new friend and she's like, like fighting crime and stuff. Like I said, I don't think it's that bad of a movie. I don't think it's one of the best decoms. Obviously it's like in the seventies on this list, but I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I think before you hate on the movie, you should definitely watch it and give it a chance. And yeah, that's all I'll say on Kim Possible 2019. So I feel like this movie might come across as a weird choice for some of you, especially because of the clip I chose to include, but I really like this movie and I wish it would have made the next list, like the top 36 good decoms instead of being number one of the worst decoms. But then I guess that's good that it's number one of the worst because then if there was one movie that you were to go away and watch, I really hope that it's this movie because I think it's a little bit underrated and should be talked about more. It's based off of a book, which I feel like you can tell by 
watching the movie like it just feels like it has a very book story arc if that makes sense and it's about this guy who feels like he doesn't fit in and so he sends out this distress call into the galaxy and then suddenly all these aliens start like replying to it and coming and trying to help him out and I will say it does have a very slow start to it but then the ending is just so good it makes the whole thing worth it and I don't want to spoil anything but I will say that the story arc between like the main guy and like the bully is really really good and really well done the love interest is named Caitlin and so that gets bonus points from me and also the ending kind of reminds me of the E.T. ride at Universal I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that but I love the E.T. ride and so I love this movie but yeah overall it's a good movie I hope that you guys watch it because like I said I feel like it is pretty underrated and I enjoy it so that is my top 36 I guess worst decoms um, I won't make you guys wait too long for the next two parts because I would like to get them out before Upside Down Magic comes out this summer because that would just throw my whole list off and I'm not ready for that. But yeah, let me know down below if you've seen every decom or what decom is your least favorite. I feel like now is a good time to watch the ones you haven't seen because we're all stuck in quarantine. So if you do check out any of these movies that I talked about, let me know down below. I can't reach all about it. Anyways, guys, my name is Caitlin. You can follow me ever at Kate Loves Disney. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. That's all I have to say for today. I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. It took me like five hours to film this video. So I really hope that the lighting from the sun setting and moving around wasn't too crazy, but I guess we'll have to find out. Go away, sun. What's that song? Oh, Mr. Sun, sun, Mr. Shining Sun. Please don't shine on me. I'm back.